Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Saturday morning to you all. Hope you guys are doing great out there this morning. I'm glad that I got the uh, day right. I did not realize that uh, in yesterday morning's video, I said good Monday morning and it was Friday morning. So I think I threw some people for a loop, but it is Saturday morning and I hope you guys are having a fantastic start to your weekend here to try to figure out a few things with the weather. Uh, the first thing we will discuss is the tropics. We'll spend a whole lot of time on um, uh, this portion of the video, but we will go over overnight into this morning's model guidance on an area we continue to watch, but we're not overly concerned about. After we get done doing that, we will spend a good bit of time on an active storm tra track I am watching for next week, we could have the return for some severe weather opportunities across the middle of the country. A much needed rain opportunity, but like I said, we are going to run the risk of some severe weather. So we'll speak on that. We'll kind of break down the pattern for next week, getting into the early portion of November. And after we get done doing that, of course, we will cover what's going to happen weather-wise across the entire low of 48 for your Saturday. Could get, a little, could get a little bit of rain for certain areas of the country uh, that have not seen it in a very long time. And I'll talk about who could see that rain opportunity for your day and night. So if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like, and if anybody has anything that I can pray about or pray over, please put it in the comments below so I can pray over it, and so others have the opportunity to pray over it also. So let's get rolling this morning. So as of right now in the tropics, um, you know, focusing in on the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, we do have this big blob of convection, shower and storm activity in the Western Caribbean, and you would think this is the beginning stages of a tropical system forming, uh, but it is not uh, just some unsettled weather that has got going it's been pretty quiet in the caribbean over the last um, week i would say but we do need to watch these areas of sort of blow ups and and convection that shower and storm activity because the waters are still relatively warm in the caribbean so we could still get tropical activity but as of right now we're not expecting anything to develop out of this as far as a tropical system so um, there is definitely some activity, though, ongoing, some unsettled weather in the western portion of the Caribbean. Everywhere else, the Gulf of Mexico, pretty quiet. Southwest Atlantic, quiet. And the central to eastern Caribbean is quiet uh, this morning. But this is certainly the area we are watching. And one model just will not let it go as far as, you know, bringing an opportunity for a tropical system developing over the next week or so. So that's what's going on right now. As far as the latest information from the National Hurricane Center, let's see if we have a new update. Well, we had the latest update. So uh, pretty much the 8 a.m. update, guys. Uh, tropical cyclone activity is not expected over the next seven days. So the experts are saying we're not worried about anything over the next seven days. So a lot of people are wondering, well, why aren't they at least showing some attention to the GFS run, which you've been tuning into my channel, really anybody's channel that talks about the weather. They've probably been showing you the GFS run, and I have too, and it keeps consistently showing a tropical system developing. But we are starting to see some trends on the GFS uh, that kind of backs up why the National Hurricane Center is not issuing any kind of area of interest for the area that the GFS wants to show a lot of attention to. Now that could change. It definitely could over the weekend, but as of now, no tropical activity expected over the next seven days. So let's go on and show you the latest GFS, the one from this morning. And we're going to start off for tomorrow morning, October the 27th, and we'll keep this rolling here. We get into Monday morning. We get into Tuesday morning. Just keep your eyes down here. An L popping up deep down here in the Caribbean, but nothing overly concerning. We get into Wednesday morning. And then we get into Thursday morning, okay? We're starting to get some lowering of pressure down here. Even something trying to get going over here, like, you know, closer to Puerto Rico, the uh, Leeward Islands, etc. Um, I want to stop it here, and this is the morning of October 1st. What was the GFS showing several runs back in the same time frame? All right, let's back it up. One run, another run, another run after that, another run after that. Okay, so this was... Yesterday morning's GFS run had a tropical storm forming on, okay, not sure what that was, but I don't know if there's a cat in here, but if y'all saw any movement behind me, it's probably a cat, uh, but anyways, let's keep this rolling here. Uh, tropical system was forming four runs ago in the same time period, which is the morning of October 31st, morning of Halloween, okay, since then, and, and let's go on and back it up another four runs, okay, so four runs prior to that, 
Okay, it had that tropical system forming on October 31st. So let's back it up. Well, let's move it forward to the current morning run, the, the current present GFS run, okay, which is eight runs. Watch how it kind of trends away from tropical development. And all of a sudden we're on the current run and it no longer has a tropical system forming yet on the morning of the 31st. But we will move this forward and take it into next weekend. And it finally does develop something, but it waits longer. Remember when I kind of talked about Delayed normally means denied in model guidance. <clears throat> That's not always the case, but a lot of times it is, especially when we're breaking down like winter weather and a big time, uh, you know, uh, pattern change to colder weather. Um, and we'll speak more on that when we break down, um, you know, uh, things in the winter. And if you're a new viewer and you haven't watched my channel during winter, we have a lot of fun during the winter. So definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, but it's backed up the timeline as far as developing something. So, you know, we start to get all the way into like next Sunday. I mean, we're what, eight days from now and it does develop a hurricane, the Caribbean. And uh, it kind of takes a weird track, which, you know, when we get late in the hurricane season, the tracks are always weird. It takes a hurricane, you know, through the greater Antilles and then pushes it out and does some weird loop-de-loop -loop stuff and does all that. Okay. So, you know, a lot of people were, you know, fear mongering and showing, you know, the possibility of a hurricane hitting Florida around Election Day, around the beginning of November. Well, I mean, you back up these runs. This thing is not only, I mean, look, look at how wild this is. It's all over the place. Okay. This is just an unreliable time frame. So had some people in the comments and, you know, it was just a friendly um, debate. Not, I wouldn't even call it a debate, just friendly kind of uh, conversation about, you know, why aren't you showing more attention to the GFS? Why are you shaming it? This, that, and the other. Well, I'm not shaming it, but this is a reason why I wasn't ever taking it super serious. It's already backed up the time frame of development. I'm not saying anything won't. In fact, I, I do think something will, will form out of this. I just don't know what it's going to be, and I don't know the exact timeline of it. Now, the Euro has been steady as she goes. You know, we take it all the way to the uh, to October 31st, just a week low down here, which is what the Euro has always showed. And then we take it into the morning of the 1st of November. Nothing really developing. It does. Models are starting to like the idea of something developing over here now. But it's nothing crazy. You know, nothing wild, nothing concerning. And we take it 10 days out all the way to the evening of the 4th of November. There's nothing out there. So... Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to leave it at that, to be honest with you. I'm not going to go over all, every single model run, but I'm telling you, there's nothing to be concerned about right now. Absolutely nothing. You know, despite what people are saying or, or overhyping, maybe, you know, there's nothing to be concerned about right now. So let's move forward. Let's talk about the pattern coming up. So let's start off by saying uh, the orange or salmon or red color, the warmer looking colors on your screen, that is high pressure, a ridge of high pressure. The blue is a trough. Um... Uh, yeah, lower pressure, okay? Higher pressure, lower pressure. Typically, almost always, lower pressure is associated with some sort of unsettled weather, some sort of storm system, and it typically brings a cold front. High pressure, sinking air, which you would think would be the opposite with the names, but sinking air, typically associated with warmer than average temperatures and just normally calmer weather. Okay, so we're, we're obviously into um this morning right we have some energy flying down here you barely can see it some weak energy some little uh kind of uh i would say buckles in these little uh lines right here these iso bars this tells us there's a little bit of energy embedded into this ridge not a big deal but we keep this going let's not focus on the short term but the medium the longer term we get into this weekend this tall ridge is spiking all the way up into central canada this ridge really anchors itself as this trough leaves the pitcher over the eastern U.S. the last few days of October. So above average temperatures, quiet, dry weather will continue to dominate the eastern half of the lower 48. And especially as we get, let's just take it all, well, let's not go too forward here. Especially as we get, and let's go take it all the way into the morning of the 29th. This ridge really just anchors, its, anchors itself over the eastern Canadian area and just the eastern U.S. This is going to set the stage for a warm, it's already been warm, but even warmer into the month of October. But I want you to look over here. There's a big trough. This area in blue is a trough of low pressure dumping out west. A lot of unsettled weather associated with it embedded into the trough and of course at the base of this trough. Anytime you have a digging trough of low pressure, this area in blue, 
like this. Let's see if we can draw on this, see if this is going to work for us. This thing's digging like this. Of course, this is a dip in the jet stream too. So you're going to get pieces of energy that fly down the base of this trough and then eject between the ridge and the trough. Okay, as you got flow kind of going like this. All right, so just keep that in mind, right? And we keep this going. We take it all the way into Wednesday morning, morning of October the 30th. Man, we might have record-breaking height levels with this ridge over Ontario and uh, areas of Quebec and the, the interior New England area. I mean, well above average temperatures associated with this. Southeast above average temperatures also, but not too crazy compared to average. At the same time, you still got impulses of energy out here associated with this trough. And based off the euro, you might have a bit of a trough ejection across the middle of the country, low pressure ejecting across the country. And then we get into, you know, October 31st, Halloween, still a ridge over the eastern U.S., but we're starting to get a little bit of um, energy. See the blue showing up over the Great Lakes region, and we keep going, and we have more areas of energy that dig down into the western U.S. We got pieces of energy shooting across the middle of the country, and then it looks like we could, it's long, it's a long-range look, we could have a pattern change as we get uh, several days into November that might switch the pattern we might get a ridge um out west and then maybe a big trough and the gfs kind of shows this too digging to the east but in the meantime between you know this weekend really getting just into next work week we're gonna have pieces of energy shooting across the middle of the country with warm being in the east cold being in the west another way to look at this is the 500 millibar jet and these are winds 18, 20,000 feet up in the air. It's basically, we look at this and we kind of see where the winds are flowing in the mid to upper levels along this jet. So we keep this going. It's a great way to look at things. It's confusing at first. We talk a lot about this when we're breaking down severe weather, but this is another way to look at it. If you look right here and look at these lines, let's use yellow. Let's see if that'll work. Yeah, it looks good. This digs down here, right? And then it shoots across this region, and then it kind of dips like this. This is that ridge spiking across the central and eastern U.S., and then a trough digging right here. Well, we got energy kind of at the base of this trough, the jet stream kind of moving like this, and this energy is going to be shooting across the middle of the country. So we get off this, and we keep going. And as we move forward in time, we're starting to get into the 29th and to the 30th. We have... Your classic looking unsettled look, I guess is the way to put it. Um, we have this trough digging in the Rockies, and then we have a belt of mid-level flow right over the middle of the country. And we got a ridge in the east. So what's going to happen here is, let's go back to black. We got a lot of flow moving like this, going like that. We also got the flow moving in tandem like this. So two kind of... Um, Areas of flow moving in tandem. We got moist air. If you hear any loud noise in the background, that's my kids. Saturday morning, it's typically pretty crazy here in the West household. So you might hear a random screen. Just my kids. Adds more of a personal feel, as you guys know. Uh, but you can really see, like if you look closely, like these lines, they kind of buckle like this right in here. That's energy about to eject across the country. When that low pressure kind of ejects across the country, and I'll show you a better look at that here in a second, it definitely helps pull in a lot of moist air. So you combine, you know, this mid-level flow kinematics wind energy with a pool of, of low-level moisture. It sets the stage, stage somewhere potentially for some severe weather. Maybe not in this entire circled area, but especially in this bottom area, this circled area. So um, we keep this going, guys, and we continue just to have this uh, belt of flow right over the middle of the country. Could have multiple low pressures. And uh, I just, in general think there's going to be a multi-day setup for an opportunity for maybe a low to mid-grade severe weather threat. A severe weather outbreak? I really don't think so. I don't want to say absolutely not, but I do think this is going to bring unsettled weather and a return of severe weather um, to the middle of the country especially. And a way to look at this low-level moisture, you need dew points really not always in the 60s and higher, but it's definitely that that's more supportive for severe weather. But, you know, 60s and 70s, of course, we're getting deeper in the fall season, closer to winter. You're not going to see dews, uh, you know, dew points um, really far north. But think of dew points as a thermodynamic. And, you know, we're, we're re talking about severe weather. I'm going to have to kind of refresh myself, breaking it down. But remember, 
dew points, you know, when you the higher the dew points, the better therm, therm, thermodynamic that you have for severe weather. That that moist air, these, you know, it just moist air underlapping uh, that kinematic flow um, that is overlapping it. It's basically overlapping ingredients that support severe weather. You know, when you go outside and it feels a little moist out there, feels humid, you can tell there's uh, probably going to be some unsettled weather later in the day, especially on those late spring, summer days, kind of like this. So you keep going. We're Monday and you're already getting a pool of moist air, a pool of mo uh, moist air pretty far north. And I mean, dew points in the 50s aren't that bad. But watch as we continue to move forward. As this trough's digging down, there's a lot of moisture getting pulled in from the north. And we keep this going. And we get into Tuesday morning. All of a sudden, you have this little skinny corridor right here of dew points in the 60s, getting all the way up into light. There's even a pool of uh, 60 degree dew points or higher, even into Iowa. Okay, so. You got all that flow. Remember that we just talked about going over this portion of the country too. Okay, and then we take it to Wednesday and then check this out. Wednesday afternoon, a deep pool of moist air all the way up into the Midwest. We got dew points over 65. I mean, getting close to even 70 in certain areas of Oklahoma. You combine that, all right? This is Wednesday afternoon. You combine that. Let's back this up a little bit. Let's go to Wednesday afternoon right there. You combine that with this mid-level flow right here going right over this area and then you kind of relook at this look at these dew points going in this area with that mid-level flow going right over this area so that's overlapping ingredients kinematics wind energy thermodynamics how high is your temperatures how's your lapse rates how's your dew points and your cape levels okay overlapping ingredients if you have that then you're going to have to run the opportunity for some severe weather and of course, you actually look at the map as far as precipitation, the low pressures on your screen, and it shows it well. Uh, you get into Tuesday afternoon, here's our first low pressure, and that's a pretty strong one, 992, uh, pretty deep low pressure. This begins to move off the Rockies into the high plains, and then we start to get, this is like Tuesday evening, uh, we might get snow breaking out across the northern high plains, just more of a chilly rain and like South Dakota, we got some moisture breaking out across Minnesota. But check out this line of storms. And this would be like Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. See these line of storms right here? Uh, kind of breaking out across areas of Iowa. That's something to watch. That could bring severe weather into the early morning hours. Okay, that's the first low pressure, right? And then there's another low pressure kind of... Is there another low pressure right in here? And I think there will be. There's just not an L showing up on your screen. You see kind of the splotches of green, well, the splotches of yellow and orange and stuff right here. Those could be severe storms down to Oklahoma, Texas, uh, Arkansas, uh, Missouri, maybe all the way up into Missouri. Um, I'm sorry, all the way up into Illinois, depending on how moist the air is. And, you know, we could get into Thursday and there could be some severe weather for the deep south. It just depends on... A few things, a few factors. So I really think Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe even Thursday are a couple days to watch for next week. And then what happens after that, you know, we start to get pretty far out. But I'd also want to watch as we get into next weekend. It looks like we have more areas of energy shooting across the country. Look at this unsettled weather across the south central U.S. And I definitely think as we get into next weekend, we could have a bit of a more unsettled pattern. As I am watching maybe a trough that digs down across somewhere besides the western u.s okay so i know that you're th if you're a new viewer you're thinking man you get really deep into that that's just the only way i know how to do it guys but uh we'll continue to break this down as confidence grows as of now let's go up here there is no day four or onward outlook it just says predictability too low from day four day five day six day seven day eight um they do discuss you know, on Wednesday, convective development with greater coverage is forecast during the day from the southern plains, the north, northeastward, into the upper Mississippi Valley. They talk about the moist air mass, and they say a severe threat area could be needed as confidence increases over the next few model runs concerning the area with the greatest severe potential. So if there can be some agreement with the model guidance, I do think we'll wake up tomorrow morning or the next morning. Uh, to a 15% risk area, basically a slight risk after day four. And it could go into Thursday. And it could be one for Tuesday, too. So I think that the, the, obviously the Storm Prediction Center is watching this. They're seeing this. So, um, But as far as like out west with these, these storm systems, this is definitely going to bring 
um, some unsettled weather across the west early next week. Higher elevation snow. And I think as we're getting to Tuesday, this could be a pretty decent storm sit, uh, system across the central Rockies. Higher elevation snow. Some of the snow could fall even into like the, the, the plains and the plateau area also. Uh, but I think for the most part, it's going to be a higher elevation thing. So, you know, we're going to start to add up this snow across Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, um, Idaho. And then as we're getting into Wednesday morning, that energy will move into the, uh, the central U.S. And then we could have another storm system, you know, maybe around the last day of October, Halloween, uh, that could bring some more unsettled weather. And then I think that these storm systems just kind of keep going. It starts to kind of become a parade of storm systems in the western U.S., and then that'll also, you know, move across the western U.S. But I think we got some tweaking to do as we get later into next week, into next weekend, and watching to see how this evolves for sure. But snowfall potential from the Euro Ensemble between now and the next 10 days does show an active track, okay, for higher elevation snow to start to add up. And this is from multiple storm systems, not one. So we're going to start to add the snow in these higher elevations of the Cascades, the Rockies, etc., and just precipitation in general, um, man, we're gonna get a lot over the weekend in the Pacific Northwest. But you know, definitely some. It's definitely not looking dry out west. Some areas look to remain dry, but for the most part, looks pretty active. Uh, but as far as what's happening today, there's a cold front uh, beginning to sag across areas. Um, and, and this isn't going to dip uh, dip much further than this, but this will make it for areas and kind of bring one or two days worth of cooler weather. Uh, it's going to bring a weird, wacky day of weather across the Carolinas tomorrow as it'll be very warm today, but very cool, maybe 15 to 20 degrees cooler tomorrow. We'll talk more on that here in a second, but this is going to dip down. There's a little bit of energy associated with this frontal boundary uh, that'll bring a nice opportunity for some showers, maybe even some storms across the southern Apps region, even east of the Apps could get a round of showers a day. We'll watch this. We got energy uh, embedded in this trough that's moving down some northwest flow up here. Maybe even some snow could fall in interior New England over the weekend. In fact, it most likely will, depending on your elevation. So we got a little bit of rain this morning in the northeast, and uh, we got a big system moving into the Pacific Northwest. It'll set the stage to a multi-system uh, setup over the next 10 days. Uh, but that's what's going on right now. Watch as warnings and advisories, red flag warnings across southern New England, even down the New Jersey, some freeze watches. It, you got a kind of a, a cold shot of air that will be very fleeting for the northeast this weekend. But dense fog down here in the Gulf Coastline and then some high wind warnings up in Montana um, for um, what's going to be a, a pretty stout storm signal uh, system over the northern Rockies. Uh, the risk of flash flooding below 5% does not show up for today. And then I'm going to use weatherwise.com um, for the severe uh, the storm prediction outlook. Guys, I just want to quickly, once again, give a shout out to this site. They have an app. Just look it up. It, for right now, it's only available on, um, on iPhone, Apple. But definitely download this app. It's a really cool app. been working with these guys. They just started this, and I, I believe in their product. And I think it's going to be a really cool app for the public to be able to use. It's free. And uh, definitely check it out, download it. But I'm using it on, you know, my desktop computer, and I love how you can just zoom into this stuff here. But uh, there's no um, significant severe weather or severe weather really predicted today. There could be some thunderstorms here, um, Texarkana area, and then we're gonna have a risk of some thunderstorms across this area. It's the area of the country that's not seeing a lot of rain lately. I'm at day. 29 without rain here at my house. I live here in Columbia, South Carolina. So could get some thunderstorms in this area today. Everybody else, you know, could get rain. But as far as thunderstorms, I wouldn't expect it. The southeast today, here's that rain opportunity. There's the energy right there in the southern Apps region. I mean, you could get some rumbles of thunder, a legit thunderstorm as possible. Across the uh, southern Apps today, you're going to get east of the the apps, you know, this evening, if you got any outdoor activities across the Carolinas, definitely some showers and storms are possible. Uh, they will really be confined to northern, nor northern half of North Carolina and then into South Car the northern half of South Carolina into North Carolina. But certainly, you know, and, and I wouldn't be surprised we wake up to some just rain and drizzle tomorrow also across the Carolinas is what we call a CAD. Stands for cold air damming. Cold air gets trapped east of the apps. You see this high pressure Definitely a just your typical cold air damming kind of setup for sure. And we'll talk more on that here in the coming video. But just a closer look at this rain, 
Any outdoor activities in the Carolinas? Watch out for these thunderstorms. It's around 7 p.m., 8 p.m. Look at Charlotte getting some storms north of Columbia. Man, I hope we get some rain from this today. Uh, I really do. But it looks like all of it's going to go north of Columbia. I'm not saying that's going to happen. But based off this model run, it does. Let's hope that some of this could ooze a little bit further south. But this will, I think this entire area will have the opportunity to get some showers and storms between now and the next 24 hours, especially this evening into the overnight hours. And rainfall between now and tomorrow, it's not showing a lot, but somebody could get over a quarter inch, maybe three tenths of an inch of rain. That I mean, that would be beneficial. A nice, a light rain will help for sure. Um, we don't need one to two inches of rain, but some light rain would help. The northeast today, some energy will move in. Cold air will sink in temporarily. And uh, as we're getting into this evening, we could have some snow flurries, snow showers kind of drifting around the higher elevations, the Adirondacks, example, for example. Um, I think lower elevations will stay rain, but just some scattered activity and then some more energy. Northwest flow will continue into tomorrow. And I think tomorrow we could legit have some a few snow squalls up here in the interior of New England. More cold air works in. If you live in the higher elevations, the Adirondacks, Green and White Mountains, and just western Maine, uh, t tomorrow afternoon could could be kind of a wintry day. We'll see what happens with this. Um, and uh, definitely a little shot of cool air. I mean, even getting inside, I mean, we're getting pretty far out all the way into late tomorrow night. Uh, could even get some snow down here into the Catskills. Maybe maybe a snow shower or two. So we'll see what happens with that. But snow between now and Monday morning, somebody could get a couple inches way up in elevation. Maybe even a dusting getting into northern Maine. So we'll see what happens with that. South Central U.S., um, Maybe some showers and storms in the Texarkana area, right where, you know, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Texas, and Louisiana kind of come together. Uh, could get some much-needed rain. I'm hearing some people have not got rain since Barrel in this area. That is unreal, if that's true. And I believe you. Um, I mean, that's just crazy. But, you know, as we're getting into Sunday morning, you know, along the Mississippi Delta area, uh, southern half of Arkansas could wake up tomorrow morning to some shower activity. It's not going to add up to much, though, guys. The north-central U.S., Pretty quiet. Most of the energy is um, going to your north. So the Great Lakes region will remain quiet. Um, and all the way into Sunday morning, it looks to be a pretty quiet day. The western U.S., a lot of energy shooting into the Pacific Northwest, especially as we get into this afternoon, this evening. Um, look at all the rain. In fact, let's just zoom into that area because there's nothing going on really anywhere else. And uh, look at all the energy flying into this area late tonight into tomorrow morning. And uh, then we start to get more of a convective element. And we got Mike, you get some rounds of thunderstorms uh, tomorrow morning into tomorrow afternoon into the Pacific Northwest. I mean, check this out. Just round after round after round. Pretty wild stuff. Uh, but rainfall between now and Monday morning, several inches of precipitation. And some of this will be in the form of snow. It begins to add up in the coastal range. Uh, the Cascades, the valleys will even get an inch or so of rain. And uh, yeah, I mean, we look at snow with this as well, and certainly will add up. But the snow levels are not very low. You got to get way up there, but some snow will begin to add up in these elevate, uh, these higher elevated regions. Temperatures today, cold front moving in, so there will be a boundary right into here, but it will be pretty warm across the deep south and the southeast. In fact, some areas could get close to record-breaking high temperatures. We'll see how warm it gets. A chilly day. Um, for the northeast, though, there'll be a, definitely a huge difference. Some areas will not get out the 30s today for the northeast. Uh, a chilly, uh, kind of average, kind of fall day in the Great Lakes region. Nothing totally unusual. It'll feel like fall across the middle of the country. And then out west, it, it's warm, but it's not going to be warm for long. It's not overly warm. It's not overly cool either. So that's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless all y'all, and y'all have a wonderful rest of your day.